many of you have probably heard, there was a winter storm in Virginia that caused a traffic jam, leaving some people stranded for almost 24 hours in their cars on the highway. The first I had heard of it, I saw on Twitter somebody tweeting saying they were stuck for over seven hours in a traffic jam, and I was like, what is going on? So I looked more into it, and of course in the comments below that tweet, there was a lot of conversation, we'll say, of people talking about how much of a nightmare this would be if you were in an electric vehicle, or how much worse a gas vehicle is for this. So it made me wanna test out how long my electric vehicles can go running the heater, sitting stopped as if they were in traffic. So the experiment I'm running, we own two Teslas. We have a 2021 Model Y with the new heat pump, and we have a 2020 Model X that has the old resistive heater. So both of these vehicles actually have some advantages and disadvantages, so let's talk about those. Right off the bat, a resistive heater in the Model X uses much more energy to keep temperature than a heat pump will. At the same time, the Model X has a much bigger battery. The Model X battery is around 100 kilowatt hours, whereas the Model Y battery is closer to 80 kilowatt hours. So right now, at the time of recording, I have started the experiment a couple of hours ago. Let's check in on the cars and see how they're doing. I started both cars at 90% charge. The Model Y charged up to 91% for whatever reason, so we'll start with 91% for the Model Y and 90% for the Model X. And this is actually a worst case scenario for both of these cars. The Model X was driven a little bit today, uh, less than 30 minutes, and the Model Y was not driven at all. This means both cars are really cold to start off. Their battery packs are extremely cold, meaning everything they're doing is a lot less efficient than if they were pre-warmed or if they had been driving for a long time. Also, I won't be in either of the cars. And when there's a person or multiple people in the cars, of course, their bodies are giving off heat, which will help warm the cabin just a little bit, so the heaters won't work technically as hard if there are people in the car, but for the sake of the experiment, we wanna see really how bad this can get. Now, the temperatures in Virginia during this event were in the low 20s, which is pretty cold, but right now in Michigan while I'm running this test, it was 15 Fahrenheit outside when I started, and it's currently 12 Fahrenheit outside, and the cars, I've set them to 70 Fahrenheit in both vehicles. I figured that was a normal temperature. Of course, if you were in an emergency, you could set it much lower, but I wanna see at 70 Fahrenheit how much energy they will use over this 12-hour period and what that will cost us in energy costs as well. So checking in on the vehicles, we are currently at the two hour mark. You can see my timer right there. We have 10 hours left in this test. The Model Y started at 91% and we're now down to 82% in two hours, which seems pretty dramatic, but I will say in the first maybe 15 minutes or so, we lost about 5% of our battery just to get the car from about 15 Fahrenheit all the way up to 70. So it took a lot of energy to get it to that temperature, but now that we're just maintaining that 70 degrees inside of the car, the rate of using the battery has slowed down significantly. If we go into the climate part of the app here, you can see that the driver's seat is set to three seat heaters there. That is the hottest it can be, and seat heaters are way, way, way more efficient than the air heating. Uh, so again, I wanted that all the way up. It's something that you definitely would use in this situation. You'd especially probably be turning uh, the heat down more, like I said, uh, but you would have your seat heater on if you had a blanket with you, which would be a great idea in the winter. You can see the exterior temperature at the bottom there is 12 Fahrenheit. The interior is 70 degrees. It's set to 70 and the climate is on. So if we switch to the Model X here, you can see we're down to 79% battery remaining. And you may not think it's really that big of a deal because the percentages are so close. The Model X is just slightly less than the Model Y. But remember, the Model X battery is much bigger at 100 kilowatt hours than the Model Y battery at 80 kilowatt hours. So every percentage we go down, which we'll do the math at the end, uh, is more energy used in the Model X than the Model Y. So you can see here, climate, keep on. It says the interior is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And so maybe you're like, whoa, 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 you are <laughs> doing too much in there, but I have it set to 70. I'm not sure why the interior is 75. My setting here is the exact same as the settings on the Model Y. You can see my driver's seat heaters are uh, set to the max to keep the driver warm. Now, of course, the Model X is a much bigger vehicle. There is more to heat, but that's kind of the point of the experiment. You can see multiple cars here. We can kind of get an idea of how much energy this is gonna use and how long your car can last. So one last thing I wanted to talk about before I wake up tomorrow and see the results is while I was kind of doing some research for this, this Washington Post article I came across. So let's check it out. A lot of weird points in this article that I kind of wanted to respond to and, and debunk or maybe confirm if, if these are right. So opinion, imagine Virginia's icy traffic catastrophe, but with only electric vehicles. 
oh no, look out. So the author says, sometime after 3 a.m. Tuesday, as an epic 48 mile winter traffic jam on Interstate 95 in Virginia dragged on, a long haul trucker from Canada heard a knock at the door of his cab. It was one of the hundreds of other motorists stuck in sub freezing temperatures with no food or water. There was probably a lot of people like that. I mean, I don't usually carry food and water in my car, uh, you know, of course on road trips and things, but not for my commute. The supplicant was driving a Tesla. Oh, that's why he didn't have food and water. <laughs> Tesla drivers, you know, they never prepared. Uh, recounted the trucker who told his story on Twitter under the handle My World Through a Windshield. And he's worried about running out of power in the cold. It's 19F or negative seven Celsius. Yes, uh, in an electric vehicle, if you get stranded and you weren't expecting it, your battery could be low and you may worry about running out of power. But like I said, same thing with a gas car, you maybe didn't fill up on the way home um, and you can run out of you know, gas for your gas vehicle too. He's a nice guy who was worried about his kids. I gave him some water, a spare blanket and a thermal mylar blanket. That's really nice of him to share with that guy. My world through a windshield did not report what eventually happened to this driver, but the anecdote illustrates an important point. If everyone had been driving electric vehicles, this mess could well have been worse. Again, I don't know what an electric vehicle has to do with this. Any vehicle can run out of fuel <laughs> if you're in a situation you didn't expect. So that's, that's very strange. The not so unprecedented event, essentially a repeat of what happened on a wintry night in the DC area 11 years ago this month, therefore provides a reality check on the push by government and businesses and business to electrify cars and trucks. The not so unprecedented event, he's saying this, it's actually pretty common, you should be prepared for this. Essentially a repeat of, oh, 11 years ago. Okay, so it's kind of unprecedented. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. Um, but it is, you know, a lot of people in these, in, in climates like where I am, do keep things in their car to be ready for an emergency like this. So we keep blankets in the car. I actually don't have one right now, but I usually keep a blanket in the car all winter because you never know if you get stranded somewhere. Uh, a simple blanket can, can be a huge difference in, in those uh, situations. It is a scientific fact that batteries of all kinds lose capacity more rapidly in cold weather, and that includes the sophisticated lithium ion ones used by Tesla and other EVs. Car makers can and do mitigate cold weather range anxiety through various technologies. Tesla is touting its new heat pump to extend winter range. We're testing that right now. Drivers can save battery power by, say, turning off the heat. Yes, they can. The issue cannot be eliminated, however, as Tesla acknowledges on its corporate website. So he's saying that you get less capacity when the battery is cold. And that is definitely true. Electric cars have less range in the winter. But if you do a longer trip or your battery is warmed up, if you're hopping like supercharger to supercharger going, you know, a, a far distance, you'll notice that the range decrease in the winter is not as significant as these shorter trips where a good amount of energy is used to warm the battery. Um, so if you're already driving on the highway and your battery was warmed up, and then you stop and you're not moving, like we're gonna see in this test and like we're seeing in the beginning, once the car's warmed up, the usage from the heat when you're not moving is really not all that much. It's a hassle in ordinary winter situations, but potentially much worse than that on a night like Monday. So yeah, I mean, that would be devastating, but again, any car can be low on fuel. It's not because it's electric. Any EV driver stuck on I-95 was right to be anxious, not only about a rapidly dying battery, but also about recharging it. Cold would make that process much more time consuming, assuming there was a charging station nearby and that the electric power system hadn't gone out as it did in parts of Virginia on Monday. Now, this is something I always see. What if the power goes out and, and you can't plug in your car? Gas pumps also don't work <laughs> when the power goes out. And there were account, accounts on Twitter of people saying gas stations in the area were running out of gas. So that's a problem that EVs face, but it's not unique to EVs. Any car can have trouble getting fuel in an extreme situation like this. And uh, talking about charging, if your battery pack is cold, absolutely true that charging takes much longer to ramp up and get fast if it has to warm the battery first. If you're sitting in traffic running the heater for 10 hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, and then you go to a charging station, your battery's already going to be somewhat warm. So your charging will be able to start up. A gas-powered Toyota RAV4 say, can go 440 miles between Phillips under ideal conditions. A fully charged Tesla Model X has 351 miles of range and much higher price. Okay, then why didn't you compare a Model Y? Uh, of course, cold also affects the performance of gas-powered vehicles. Many were left stranded in Virginia after they ran out of fuel or their batteries died. They also have batteries that can you know, be affected by the cold. Um, and like he said, they, they can run out of fuel as well. Um, but it's not as inconvenient if you're low because you can just go to the gas station. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the biggest advantage for uh, gas cars still. All else being equal though, cars and trucks with internal combustion engines, ICE, would have the advantage in coping with a sudden challenge such as I-95 fiasco. It is much easier to rehabilitate a disabled ICE vehicle. Rescuers can deliver gallons of gas in convenient jugs. Gas stations are still far more numerous than EV charging stations, and ICE car batteries can be jumped 
jump started in minutes. Totally true. I mean, everything about that, of course, is true. It's much easier to get a gas car going with a gas can. An electric car, the, the biggest thing I've thought of is there have been multiple videos where people show that you can tow an EV and use the regen to add miles and miles of range um, to the car in a very short distance. So that's, you know, uh, something you could do. But yes, if, if you have all the electric cars and they all ran out of power, it's going to be a lot harder trucking them out of there. Um, that's for sure. Absent some breakthrough in mobile charging technology, out of juice EVs in out of the way places will need a tow. If Monday's nightmare had been an all electric affair, they might have littered the highways for miles. Well, cars did litter the highways for miles. There were abandoned gas cars, maybe some electric cars, I don't know. Um, and some of them needed tows. Also, some could just get gas, of course. Um, but if the owner's not there, then you can't just put gas in it and it's not gonna drive itself away, haha. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, there are actually some mobile charging uh, uh, situations you can use. And if you think about it, there are places to charge like everywhere, um, all over. There are plugs you can plug in. Now, they're not fast or convenient, but in an emergency, again, if you can have a mobile uh, something come charge you for five or 10 miles, you can probably get to some kind of outlet uh, to get going again. Wait a minute, what about all those electric cars in Norway that Will Ferrell told us about? What does that even mean? Who cares? <laughs> in his cute General Motors commercials, Norway's really cold. Norway has boosted the EV share of new car sales to 65% in 2021 via massive subsidies, far larger than those contemplated in the stalled Build Back Better legislation. But of course, he's not gonna mention the subsidies for oil and gas, but that's another topic. Yet it has not repealed the laws of physics in Norway's winter, EVs lose an average of 20% of their range, according to Norwegian Automobile Federation. Totally true. Uh, like we said, EVs lose range in the winter, but again, you you can charge at home. You can charge, sometimes people charge at work. Um, and so the car's gonna charge itself while you're sleeping or while you're working or whatever. So in those cases, it's a lot more convenient, even though you lose some range, to be charging where you already are than have to stop somewhere else and fill up. Internal combustion models still account for 85% of vehicles on Norway's roads, partly because the Norwegians who bought EVs generally did so in addition to an ICE car they already owned. That's cool. That's what we had as well for a while. We had a, an a ICE vehicle and an electric vehicle. Now we have two electric vehicles and no gas car because we just liked them better. I mean, it was as simple as that. And the government is planning to scale back EV purchase incentives because of the cost, which reached, okay, well, this is not really related to, <laughs> it's just like, stop subsidizing. Why is this foreign country subsidizing things I don't like? There aren't many relevant comparisons between the vast automobile dependent United States and Norway, a nation of about 5.5 million, where a mere 10% of workers in the largest city commute by car. The point is not that electric cars can't work as well as ICE counterparts in many or even most ordinary situations. They can. The point is that when people invest their money in a vehicle, they expect to be able to count on it even in extraordinary situations. Yeah, I think we kind of covered all that. Like, you can, you can depend on it. Uh, if you are low on charge then or low on gas, you're going to be in more trouble than if you had a higher charge or, or more gas. I mean, yeah, that's as simple as that. Mass adoption of EVs and the hoped for cut in greenhouse gas emissions thus hinges on the availability of EVs that can do everything existing ice metals can all the time for the same price and total cost of ownership with no extra hassle factor in all kinds of weather. That's true. If something's the same price, but it's worse, I'm not going to buy it. Why would I buy the worst thing? <laughs> I'm going to buy whatever's better. That's the equal price. And like that driver on I-95 in the wee hours of Tuesday morning, we're not there yet. That fool Tesla driver didn't bring food and water. I'll link this one below if you want to check it out. There's a lot of really good uh, comments down here you can check out if you want to uh, go to that and read the comments. So I will see you in the morning and we will check how the cars have done. After 12 hours, we can extrapolate that and see uh, how much energy we used, how long they would last in this type of situation. Would they last 24 hours? Would they last 50 hours, 70 hours, 12 hours? Who knows? Um, so I will see you on the other side. Okay, so we're out here. The timer had about one minute left. I took screenshots of that. Uh, you can see the cars. It did snow last night, but of course on the windows, there's no snow. This is the Model Y here on this side with the heat pump. And we go over to this side with the Model X. Again, no snow on the windows. If you look at the roof, uh, the middle part um, is much more insulated, so the snow is not melting. Um, but yeah, anywhere there's glass, there's really no snow sticking there. It felt kind of weird to leave them on all night. Um, but what I'm going to do... I'm gonna plug in the Model X. We actually want to use it today. <laughs> um, and it's, again, it's been 12 hours. The Model Y, I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna turn the temperature down. So let's hop in the car really quick and check it out, see what percentage it's at. So my timer just went off. We are at 57% in the Model Y, down from 91% over 12 hours. So we'll do a final conclusion in a bit and do a little math there. Um, but that means it would last over 24 hours on a full charge, um, but we'll get some more accurate numbers. What I want to do 
Because let's say you're in the situation, I've been sitting on the highway for 12 hours, which is crazy, but people experience that. Of course, I would have turned my climate down um, to be sure that I'm not gonna run out of battery. So let's just turn it down to 60. We'll leave the seat heater on full. I'm gonna get out because that's gonna be loud. And we'll see, I'm gonna do another six hours. So it's eight um, at two o'clock. I'll check it again. We'll see what percentage we're at then. All right, and heading over to the Model X here, you can see we are currently at 46%. Uh, so yeah, that's um, well, again, we'll do some math on the exact kilowatt hours the exact energy that was used in these cars in these 12 hours But that shows far more energy was used in the Model X because it has a much bigger battery It used more percent uh, to do kind of the same thing that the Model 3 did But if we go here, you can still see keep climate on is enabled if we pull that up uh, You can see in the bottom there where it says keep that means the climate's been on all night. I have the three seat heaters going. Um, so yeah, very interesting uh, results so far. All right, so the final results of the test are in. I've done a few quick calculations. So for the Model Y, 12 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the highest temperature we reached throughout the entire test, including the extended six hours I did at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, the highest temperature we got was 15 Fahrenheit outside. Uh, the lowest I think I saw while I was awake was 12 Fahrenheit. I think the forecast said 9 was the low. I don't know exactly what it hit in my driveway where my cars were. Uh, but So that was the test. Very cold. 12 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We went from 91% down to 58%. So we used 33% in that amount of time, which would give you around 36 hours total usage of your battery if you're at a full charge. It used 26.5 kilowatt hours. That's the amount of energy from the battery that it used. And just for fun, if you pay 16 cents per kilowatt hour, like I would if I didn't have solar, that would cost me around $4.22 for that amount of energy. Now the Model X in the exact same conditions, except with a resistive heater instead of the Model Y's much more efficient heat pump, went from 90% down to 47%. So not only was it 10% lower than the Model Y, it has a bigger battery, so each one of those percentages is worth more energy. Model X used 43% for the same amount of time in the same conditions, which means it would last you around 28 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It would have been nice to see it at 60 Fahrenheit because I think it would have lasted a lot longer than that, but we had to use the car, so we plugged it in. The Model X used 43 kilowatt hours to do the same thing the Model Y did, which would cost $6.88. May not seem that different from $4.22. We can round that down to $4.20, but it is over 50% higher in cost. So that is a lot more energy that it used to do the same thing. Now the extended test in the Model Y is where it gets really exciting. Six hours keeping the cabin at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and keep in mind the temperature was still 15 degrees Fahrenheit at the highest for the entire six hour duration. We went from 58% down to 48%. So in that six hours, we only used 10%. If we double that 12 hours, we would use about 20% versus the 33% we used to keep it 10 degrees higher. So if we extrapolate that out, 15 degrees outside, 60 degrees inside the car will last about 60 hours, which is a really long time again on a full charge. The six hours that I had the car running used eight kilowatt hours and that would cost about a dollar 28. So six hours of running the heater costs a dollar 28. That is some efficiency right there. Now, how long can a gas car last if you are stranded? Of course, just like different EVs, different gas cars have different size gas tanks, use different amounts of gas. But while idling, the best I could find with a little bit of math was somewhere around 50 hours on average is what you would last with a full tank all the way to empty. So it did surprise me how comparable these actually are. If you keep your heat a little too high in the electric vehicle, you're not going to last as long and if you keep it much lower you can last longer whereas in a gas car the heat is a byproduct of the waste of turning gas into energy and so you can just crank it the whole time and be sweating inside your car while you're stranded and you're not going to run out of gas any faster so overall i think it's safe to say if you do some planning before you head out you should be good an electric car is not really going to have any more troubles other than if you do run out of charge it's going to be a lot harder to get you out of there you'll need a tow whereas a gas car you can just bring a gas can but that's not to say of course gas cars don't have their their own disadvantages and I don't want to get into all of that uh, but you know everybody wants to beat up on each other and say you have to have this car you have to have this car uh, they both have advantages and disadvantages I think for the most part outside of some specific scenarios most people would prefer electric if they spent a lot of time with an electric car and then try to go back to gas they would not enjoy it not everybody but most people I think that would be the case so I hope you enjoyed this one this was kind of fun to make and research uh, I hope you learned something if you have any questions leave them down below I'll talk to you down there and you'll see me in the next video